So I was quite surprised pleasantly of course that the video which got the maximum views on the YouTube channel was on the Gorak rule that is the title of the video and it impacted viewers deeply and subsequently I did I think one or two more and uh, I received emails on how people were even familiar with Goraknath. I was not at all familiar with this legendary figure and uh, discovered him over time. So this video is specifically for lovers of Goraknath. Um, and you know, may they enjoy listening to it. So Goraknath is not really a well-known figure as such, but those who follow the Nath tradition of course know about him as the one who established the Namnath Sampradaya, the nine Naths, the first of course being Adinath Shiva. Now, I personally am no expert on Goraknath, nor have I studied his books to the degree which many people have. This is more about a natural unfolding in my life, uh, which I'd like to speak about. One was, I recall in my younger years, it was my mother's guru who had once said that Every time you eat something or have a glass of water, recite the mantra Om Chaitanya Gorakshnatha Nama or rather Om Chaitanya Gorakshnathaya Nama, like a blessing. So I think that is the first time I came across this name. And then I met Yogi Raj Gurunath, who is a Kriya Yoga teacher. And he had come across a lot of literature where he was convinced that Mahavtar Babaji, whom he refers to as Shiv Goraksha Babaji, and Goraknath are the same figure. So, in the early days when I met him, then we discussed this and I said he must share this knowledge with the lovers of Goraknath. And that is how his book came about on Babaji and the correlations and the evidence he gives for this. But I saw during these years that somehow Goraknath was in my field of vision of things around me. A lot of coincidences, chance encounters like this. And I would like to share some uh, places which I have visited as a result of these chance encounters, which I had never known of. And it is phenomenal because someone going back hundreds of years, you know, across India, you will find caves of Goraknath where he sat and meditated and how he reached those places by foot is beyond my comprehension. But one such place, I recall an incident, we were at Trimbakeshwar, which is outside Bombay near Nasik. It is a holy town, which is the holy temple of Trimbakeshwar. And behind it are the Brahmagiri hills. So we had gone sightseeing once and the guide pointed out to a cave up on the hill where he said the Ganga uh, it's called, I think, the Ganga something and he said, we can go up there and take darshan of the Ganga. It is considered that it's the same water, although it's so far away from the Ganges. But my eye kept going to the right at another small cave, which was in the same hill. So I asked him, I said, what is that cave? And he said, no, that is not one many people visit. We'll go to the one on the left. But I insisted something rather arose to ask what is this cave? And so uh, he said, that is the Guraksh Gufa. Now this kind of really intrigued me because again, Goraknath was coming into my life in this way. 
So I requested if we could go and visit the Gorak Bufa, which we did. And I remember walking up the stairs. Luckily, the car could cut the journey by at least three fourths. Otherwise, the climb is a lot. So we circled around the hill, went up, and then the last flight of stairs was there. And I looked up at the sky, and I saw two eagles circling. And then I informed my sister and brother-in-law. I said, "Look up!" And when they looked up, they didn't see these eagles, but they were there. At least when I looked up. Anyway, so we entered the cave of Goraknath. It's a small cave, and there was a pujari sitting there who was just telling people how to go in and come out and all that. And we sat up for some time overlooking the landscape. It was quite a phenomenal experience to be there. Knowing that Gorakhnath had come here and meditated for a while, and as soon as we got down, coincidentally, I got a call on my mobile, and it was from Yogi Raj Guru Nath. So I did tell him that I have just come from the darshan of this cave, and then I asked him whether he had mentioned to me about these two eagles circling, or had read it in a book of his, or some. Somewhere, but he said no. He had no clue what I was mentioning about. But I did have this somewhere that there is a place where these two eagles keep circling. So, like this, I found instances where, for example, I was in Rishikesh, and uh, Ma Amudni Saraswati, who was the editor of my mother's first book, said that we must visit the. Jhilmili Gufa, which is again a cave, probably sixty thousand years old, which is related to Goraknath. And before I knew it, it was so simple. The car was organized, the driver was organized. He knew the way. And again, I felt it was just that one was being led to this place. And uh, the cave was phenomenal. It was huge. It was a massive cave which had an opening on the top. Through which one could see the sky, as if like it was an open sasra or chakra, and there were steps which we could climb to go to the top, the roof of the cave, and there was a statue of Shiva and Goraknath sitting there. So I am sure this is uh, this Jhilmili Gufa is very popular with the those who follow the Nats, the Nats Sampradaya. But uh, to be taken there with such effortlessness was. Uh, Truly a blessing, and anyone who is following Goraknath, I would like to uh, say that this is something which you would find extremely beautiful to visit. And I think, if I remember correctly, we went to the Nilkant Mahadev Temple first, which was in the same direction, and then we there was a half an hour walk to this cave. So you can imagine, you know, someone. I mean, Rishikesh in those days, up there, and Trimbakeshwar. It's quite a humbling experience when you consider the length and breadth such a master would have traversed. Another experience I'd like to share is the famous Girnar Mountain, which is supposed to be a land of lot of mysticism, and. Uh, Populated by many masters, seen and unseen, and somebody mentioned to uh, me that uh, you know you should visit Girnar, and I didn't have really a conscious interest in all this. But again, when I found that the highest point of Girnar was called the Goraknath Tonk, probably the seat of Goraknath, that kind of intrigued me. I don't know why it's still something I can't say. I am a chosen one or special one where I've had experiences or darshan of Goraknath, but there is a kind of pull. And what again I saw is a friend of mine I was having dinner with said that his father has done this in his younger days. He'll organize the taxi. He'll organize everything, the guide, and it became very simple. And it is. Perhaps for me, the toughest journey I have undertaken because it is a climb of, they say, more than nine to ten thousand steps. Very steep climb up the Girnar Hills, and then you climb down, 
and first you cross the Jain temple of Neminath, I think, which is a stunning statue, and then you go to a Devi temple, and then after that you reach Goraknath Tonk, which just to sit there, it's a very small hilltop, but when you sit up there and you look down on land below, you feel you're floating in the air, you know. And the main hill is the Dattatreya hill, because the Nats worshipped Dattatreya, Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. So that is actually the end of the pilgrimage. But what is interesting is that the Goraknath peak and the Dattatreya peak are so close to each other, you only wish you could walk across, but you actually have to go right down to the hill and then climb right back up, which is extremely tiring. But somehow we did it. I think one trick was that at one of his uh, talks, Guru Nath had mentioned the Goraknath mantra. Uh, Om Ring Rang Raksha Raksha Goraksha. It's basically a protection mantra. So when we started this journey, it was so daunting that I started chanting this mantra inside. And amongst us, for me, it was thankfully the easiest to do. The other two members of our group were really struggling. But I don't know whether it was this mantra, but luckily I was able to do it quite comfortably. So, any lover of Goraknath who is keen on exploring these places, I would say Girnar mountain uh, is a must do if they are physically fit and able to do it. Yet another place I visited was, this is thanks to a friend couple who lives in Pune who knew of my interest in Goraknath and he took us to two places. One is a place which is actually called Gorakgad or Gorakshagad because he was known as Goraknath and Gorakshnath, which is on a hill, uh, which is, it has a statue of Goraknath, which is the only one with four arms. Chaturbhuj Murti is what it is called. And again, that was a very mystical setup on the hill. I think it is near Ahmednagar, about 40 kilometers from Ahmednagar. It wasn't easy to find, but we found it. And uh, it had a very special atmosphere, very peaceful, very quiet. And this is another place which I came across thanks to a friend of mine who took me there. But I am sure it can be found if one has interest in finding it. Then he took us to a hill called Garbagiri, which is supposed to be very sacred with the Nats. Again, it was a long drive. And he informed me that this is where uh, Shiva actually announced that Goraknath would be the head of the Namnath Sampradaya, although the first Nath was Machindra Nath. It is also the hill where apparently the celestial beings announced that Nyaneshwar and his brothers uh, Nivritinath, Sopan and Muktabai would be born. And at the base of the hill is supposed to be a well or pond near which Nyaneshwar started writing the Nyaneshwari. So this hill is considered extremely sacred by the Navnath Sampradaya. And there was a big platform on the hilltop which had Machindarnath's uh, enclosure. It's called Machinder Gad also, and it is highly revered this place. So we went there, and again, I can only be thankful to Goraknath for bringing me there. Yet another place I visited was a place called Kudal. This was quite peculiar because the name came to me in a dream, and I didn't know what this word meant. So I went to Google, you know, and I typed Kudal. It didn't show much, but some reference came of Goraknath and Kudal. And then I called Kapil again, and he said, this is where Goraknath had supposedly defeated Ma Kali. And Kudal is quite close to Goa. 
So on one trip to Goa, we went to a Kali temple there and again there was a Machindranath uh, place marked there. And of course, in all these places, there is a dhuni burning because the dhuni is the sign of the Naths. It is very important for them. Sai Baba was called Sai Nath. He had a dhuni burning. And I think there is a connection because Sai Baba was in fact, uh, he considered himself an incarnation of Kabir, if I am not mistaken, or others did. And Kabir has spoken a lot about Goraknath. So I feel this whole stream of the Naths is connected in a very deep way. And let's not forget Nyaneshwar's brother was called Nivritri Nath. So Kudal is another place which happened. And uh, I'm just sharing this because India offers these places are still there. They are well taken care of. They are alive. And it seems to me that the Navnath tradition and the Naths are very much around. Near Bombay was Gagangiri Maharaj, Gagangiri Nath Maharaj as he was called. And I had met Dr. Ram Bhosle. We have a video of my encounters with Dr. Ram Bhosle who spent time with Mahavtar Babaji in the Himalayas. And Dr. Ram Bhosle had told me when I met him once that when he visited Gagangari Maharaj at Khapoli outside Bombay, he waited before entering the room because he saw the Navnats go into the room and he waited for them to come out. And strangely, my mother had the same vision when she visited Gagangari Maharaj, that she saw these nine beings there. And at that time, they had actually made a wall which had statues of the Namnats. So while it has not been my background, I have never been one for, you know, much into pilgrimages, uh, temples as such, I have been open to this and I found that I, the universe was taking me to Goraknath's uh, places or people connected with Goraknath or uh, this beautiful flavor which runs across this magnificent country of India where such beings were revered, they have stayed, they have conducted meditation practices and their vibration field is still alive in these places. So I would only encourage others who are fond of Goraknath. Let's not forget when Osho was asked by Sumitranandan Pant to name the pillars on which Indian spirituality stood and the number got crunched from a high number to 12 to 7 to 4. And then he was asked to drop one of those four and he said, I will not drop Goraknath. And then he gave his reasons why. That is there available on the net, that interview. And it is on the importance of Goraknath to this land.